uh, thank you very much, Anton. So, um, so first, uh, well, it's a great honor to be invited to this conference. Um, of course, Maxime has had a, hu a huge, huge influence on on everything I know, everything I understand since since uh, since I started to think about mathematics. I remember in my first year in graduate school, my advisor told me that I should read all of Maxime's papers. Um, this was not easy. Uh, Ian Gornofsky. So it just took this took me the next several years, but uh, <laughs> uh, but you know somehow this is how I learned you know everything about topological algebra and operals and the BV formalism and Chern Simons theory you know, and mirror symmetry and infinity algebras and the modular life curves and all this stuff. Um, so I think. I, I think it's this great paper from 1994 in the European Congress of Mathematics, and I spent an incredible amount of time reading this paper. It was great. But anyway, so today um, I want to talk about something that's long been a, um, a dream of mine, so, um, which is something about understanding some piece of string theory in mathematics. So. So one of the string theories physicists like to consider is 2B super string theory, which is some, something defined in, in 10 dimensions. And then one of the important ingredients in 2B super string theory is ADS CF, CFT correspondence, which conjectures some relationship between open strings and closed strings. So what I want to, under, to the aim of this talk is, firstly, kind of understand a small piece of 2B super string theory. So it's going to be some twisted form. And this is, you know, something which is may be familiar to many people, at least some aspects of this. Since Witten's work in the 1980s, you know, for example, Witten tried to study um, N equals two super, sim super symmetric gauge theories, and he, he argued that we're going to understand a piece of, of that N equals two super symmetric gauge theory by thinking about Donaldson theory. And that was an incredibly fruitful idea. So I want to apply something similar to, to string theory and, and supergravity, um, and also kind of prove a very weak form So some of the version of ads CFT I'm, I'm able to access is not super, not incredibly powerful, but it's, it hints that there are more interesting non perturbative results, which can, you can see by thinking about this, this method, which I hope, yeah, it should be interesting. OK, so what's, what's the basic idea of ads CFT? First thing I, That's weird. <laughs> What's that? No, it feels just kind of unstable, yeah. Yes. But the rest is okay. Some kind of gravity is gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Super gravity, yes. <laughs> so you remember just some kind of basic story of string theory closed strings in type 2B become in some limit 2B supergravity. Um, kind of, can if we have, say, if we're on kind of say on, say, X, for example, a 10, 10 manifold, and have Y inside of X, which is even dimensional, On Y, I can consider open strings ending on Y. And this becomes some kind of supersymmetric gauge theory on Y. OK. 
Um, this is the kind of very basic string theory thing. Um, and you know, very many, possibly all, supersymmetric gauge theories can be realized in this way in, in even dimensions. So I want to talk about twisting this story. And when we twist this story, we're going to get something which is more accessible and more familiar to mathematicians, at least conjecturally. Um, so I'm, the first thing to talk about is twisting supersymmetric gauge theory. So, so just say on R4, say Rn. You have a supersymmetric gauge theory. On Rn, then it's acted on by definition. This is what it means to be supersymmetric by a, some kind of a super Lie algebra. If we choose some Q, there's an odd symmetry. which satisfies q squared equals 0, then the twisted theory as in Sergei's talk is, is, essential, is equal to the q cohomology of the original theory. So I'll give you a better definition in a second because you might ask what does it mean? What does this really mean? Um, better. Well, field theories, you know, if, you, if you're like me and you like things like the BRST and BV method of considering field theories, then everything in your, in your field theory is a homological object anyway. So for example, the Hilbert space of the theory is a cochain complex. H with some differential. BRST, and the twisted theory, with some kind of new complex. That's Q. So we just add on this Q to the differential. And this makes sense because the fact this was a symmetry means that these guys commute. And this, because, because q squared to 0, this still squares to 0. Okay, so notice that there's, there's going to be a spectral sequence relating this guy to this guy. That's how they're related. Um, so this is something you can compute. Let's see. This may seem like I, you know, the way I've written it down procedure is a little abstract, but it's something you can really sit down and compute at the classical level by messing around with various forms of various types and spinners and seeing and you know, various maps between them. So let's see what it means for supergravity. And I could be wrong, but I, as far as I know, this has not appeared in the literature. Um, and this is a bit more abstruse, may maybe. Let's consider, kind of, say, supergravity on, say, on OR10. Now, the difference between supergravity and ordinary supersymmetric field theories is that here, the supersymmetry is gauged. That means we, the fields here might be a metric and a bunch of spinners. And the gauge symmetry is the ordinary diffeomorphisms plus also some fermionic symmetries. Whereas here, it's just an asymmetry. We're not quotienting by it. So here, supersymmetry is gauged. Now, the way, one way to model this gauging by some symmetry algebra is that 
we is to introduce um, ghosts as introduced by, by Feynman and BRST. So that the supersymmetry algebra Sorry, this may be a bit abstruse for non-physicists, but you can, there's a math way to say it too, but maybe I won't have time to do it. Now, the way the ghosts work, so ghosts, what ghosts do, it's a way of modeling the quotient by something, because you know, it introduces some chevalier algebra complex based on the symmetry algebra. So, but, so the way it works is that if I have an ordinary bosonic symmetry, then the ghost is some odd field. But if I have a fermionic symmetry, then the ghost is bo bosonic. So fermionic symmetries, symmetry Q, Q becomes some kind of bosonic <coughs> ghost. Then twisted supergravity is by definition supergravity in a background where Q is constant. Um, so note that this makes sense. Q squared is zero, and so Q preserves some like the background metric. Okay, so I hope this wasn't too confusing to the mathematicians. Um, is this just a vector field? Yes, it's a vector field. So it's always Q squared is zero. No, because it's an odd vector field. Think about the Ram differential. That's a derivation of the Ram algebra. So, by constant, do you mean like a killing spinner, or? I'm yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I said an or ten. Yeah. Oh. But if you, if I did in oh, some right. other manifold, oh, it would sorry. be a killing covariant yeah. constant. Right. Okay. okay. Yes. So the, the fact that it's killing spinner, that means it preserves the metric. Okay. Any any other questions? What do you mean by background? We're, we're doing like perturbative supergravity, perturbing around this background. Now, what does it mean? It's a metric? It's, so there's a bunch of fields. So I'm saying we're going to perturb around some supergravity background where all of the fields are zero except for the metric and this field. And this field is a ghost or fermionic Yes. And if you think about it, what, the, the reason this is a good thing to do is that if I, if I could couple supergravity to some other field theory, and then I put the, the other field theory in this supergravity background, that would do what we've said above. So that's why it's a reasonable thing. OK, so now we have some cases okay, of the physics, and hopefully we're going to get to more mathy things in a minute. So the conjecture is that the twist, the twist in this sense, of the B model, oh sorry, of of two B string theory say on for example X, which is some clavier fivefold. Sorry, in X could be or ten, for example. And the reason you want it to be clavier is what Ezra said, because that guarantees there to be a covariant constant spinner is the B model. Um, so what do I mean more precisely? Oh. So the B model will come from Open strings, like B mod sorry, the gauge theory will come from open string B models and B brains. So now that's, that's so I'll explain that in a second. Was well, that? There are yes, there are. I wasn't sure if people can see them though, because of the angle. I, can people see these these blackboards? Yes. 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 Okay. Well,
Okay. Can you res resolve the kappa symmetry? The which symmetry? Kappa symmetry. Which is the kappa symmetry? <laughs> it's a covariant version of string theory. Green shot <coughs> with the string theory. Oh, so yeah, so I don't, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do this in the world sheet point of view. I'm only knowing how to do this in the supergravity point of view and the gauge theory point of view. The reason is that from the world sheet point of view, the space-time supersymmetry is kind of not obvious, and I don't understand. I mean, this is how you should prove it, right? You just might understand space-time supersymmetry from the world sheet point of view and just calculate. But I don't understand that. So, so why is it legal to replace uh, string theory with supergravity? So there's only an approximation. Right, that, you're absolutely right. This is only approximations. This is, this is I mean, you've got to hope that there's some better version of twisted string theory, which I don't understand at the moment. But you're absolutely right. This is a twisted form of this approximation to string theory. Because the usual form is not about supergravity or application, it's about string theory. Or <coughs> yes. Like one side of supergravity. Why should it hold on the nose? Well, it does hold somehow. Um, I suspect the reason, the reason it's going to hold is that you, you, could, you could further guess that the, you know, the twist of the actual 2B string is the B model string, and the B model string has no instantons. So therefore, <coughs> the supergravity representation is a very good one. Um, okay. so, so the B model, again, is two pieces. It's the open string. It's, if, again, like x is some clavio, say a fivefold, and y inside of x is a complex manifold, I can do the kind of holomorphic transcendence type, type field theory, which you get from thinking about the open string gauge theory, uh, which has fields. Or harm. O y, O y, tensor G L n, the shift of one. It's well. It's a sheaf on. It's a coherent sheaf on X. Debug four. Debug, you use a double. It's just with the one. Ah, four away, yeah. You resolve it as a perfect complex. You, 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 you take a causal resolution of this guy. So, for example, if, if like x is equal to vector spec v, a vector bundle on y, and y is equal to the zero section. In this case, you can compute the Orham by a causal resolution, and then the fields are the double complex of y with coefficients okay, Is this this make you happier, Jan? Not, not happy, but okay, go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, all, all examples will be of this nature anyway, that I care about. OK, so you can ask, just as a check of the conjecture, you can ask. Sorry, do you mean we shouldn't care about other examples, or we haven't got to them yet? Um, other examples are interesting, although if you want to construct things at the quantum level, it's much easier to do this kind of example. Uh, <clears throat> and, and to relate to actual supersymmetric gauge theories, that's much, much easier to do these computations on flat space. <laughs> Can you formulate more precisely what you mean by this conjecture? So the conjecture is two parts. Firstly, that the, the, the twist of type 2b supergravity is BCOV theory. The second part is that if I take, for example, a holomorphic flat submanifold of OR10, a linear submanifold of C5, then I can twist the type, 2 D, type 2b D brain gauge theory in the usual sense. And what I get is this kind of holomorphic Simons theory. That you can actually calculate, and it's true. 
Okay, so this. So, in the case of say y is equal to c2 inside of c5, you expect from the physics, this conjecture should say that this field theory tensor GLN is a twist of n equals 4 Young Mills. This you can calculate explicitly, and this is true. I wrote a paper calculating this several years ago, kind of up, 2011. And there are many other examples where it really is correct. So, could you repeat your answer to Anton's question? Uh huh. So, in what sense is this a precise conjecture? Yes, so there are two parts. So the first conjecture is that um, the twist in the sense of type 2b supergravity, just at the classical level for now, is BCOV theory. And what's BCOV? Because BCOV theory is the, what you get by the supergravity theory associated to the B model. So I was about to say that in a minute. BCOV theory on X. On X, on a Clavier 5-fold. Um, I was, was going to say that in more, more detail in a second. And then the open string version is that, so here, if, if we, um, so more generally, so the open string version is that the twist of the D-brain supersymmetric gauge theory is this kind of holomorphic churn Simons based on this kind of gadget. In DSFT, we're comparing closed string and open string. Yes. I don't see it here, so we have rather oh. uh, closed, closed and open, open, and over. Right, 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 right. But I'm, I'm, so what we're saying is, okay, the kind of diagram I want is like open, kind of closed, ADS, CFT, and then there's the B model. If open, um, closed, I was about to say in a minute what the closed B model is, but this is going to be somewhat polymorphic John Simons, and BCOV. This is twisting. This is twisting. And here, ADS, CFT. And then this is. I'm able to kind of prove some shadow over this statement. Yeah. I haven't talked about this yet. OK. So we expect, again, that the B model closed string, for example, on x, a uh, Clavio fivefold should be equal to a twist of 2B supergravity. So. This is the conjecture. So let's see if I can make this um, I need to explain to you, so when, 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 we, when I'll talk about ADS-CFT in the, this B twist, we first need to understand what the closed string B model is. Oh man, that's really silly. I don't have the same blackboard I just pushed up. <laughs> so, yeah, so I need to explain to you what the B model post string really looks like. So, fields. Of BCOV theory 
Well, you can write them in two ways. It's going to be the cyclic cochain complex of the category of perfect complexes on X. And then you can use the hotfield cosin rosenberg theorem to write this more explicitly as polyvector fields on X adjoin some parameter T with some differential plus T del. Um, this is the usual d bar operator, which I need to explain briefly. Polyvector fields on X is the Dolbo complex on X with coefficients in the exterior algebra of the tangent bundle. And the del operator is, is a divergence operator, corresponds to the con B operator, and it maps omega i x wedge j t to wedge j minus 1 t of x. Yes, exactly, yes. Okay. Sorry. This is isomorphic to omega 0 i x wedge 5 minus j t star of x. And here it's the usual Duram operator. Yes, exactly. It's, but this, this correspondence is going to work in some non compact x. Since I've erased this already, I will use this blackboard. Um, so the questions we want to address are the following. Sorry, is it going to be final processor? Okay, this is the field of this. Yes. Like yeah. level. So is it a class complete? Is there a path into the role? Yes, it's, the way we're going to treat it is it's a field theory. So it's a field theory in the BV formalism. So it's going to be described by a shifted Poisson manifold. Like in, uh, when Tony's going to talk about this kind of thing. However, this is a kind of degenerate theory. Normally, it's described by a symplectic manifold. This example is not symplectic, but Poisson. So I need to describe you what the, the DG manifold structure is and what that Poisson bivector is. So the DG manifold as I learned, if you remember reading Maxime's papers in the early 90s, DG manifolds, the differential is given by, corresponds to some Lie bracket on some space. Um, so it's controlled by the differential graded Lie algebra. It's a kind of formal. Differential graded Lie algebra, which is polyvector fields on X, T, shifted by 1 with the shoot and bracket. Are you happy with this? This kind of formalism, Anton? Or? Yeah. Oh. Um, so to give a DG manifold, I need to give you a, it's the spectrum of a DG ring. You've got a formal DG manifold. So the ring of functions are cochains. This chevalier Almer cochain complex. So really, the DG manifold is equal to some kind of formal 
formal extended moduli space. of deformations of x. And you can also think of it as the moduli of deformations of category of perfect complexes on x as a clavier category. Degree t is equal to 2, yes. Exactly, yeah. Oh, um, um, when I say something like this, this is the content of Maxim's famous theorem about formality. This equality is this kind of very hard theorem. Kind of formality theorem. Okay, well, what's the Poisson structure? So the Poisson structure, Poisson kernel, is, let me just finish this sentence, sorry. Take, okay, I take the delta function of the diagonal, apply this delta operator, that's the Poisson kernel. So, sorry, yes, sir. You want uh, vector fields to be in degree zero. Oh, yeah, you, yes. Uh, okay. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh. Yes, and the quantum field theory, uh, um, I will explain in a minute that you can quantize it. Yeah, that's not very obvious. It's extremely non-obvious. So it's about threefold, and it's only doing fivefold. Yes, and it's also it's if you think about it, it's it's non-normalizable. So, but there's in the only in the threefold case. Yes, but. So, so that was actually the next next topic I wanted to explain. Is when 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 can you quantize this and what does it mean? Sorry, is that <laughs> Yes. So when you take cochains, it's a topological vector space. Okay. So. Okay. So when can you quantize? And what does this mean? So firstly, for the closed string, you see the um, the answer is that you can always quantize. So why, why would you expect this? So I'll, I'll suggest two different ways to think about it. So one is, uh, one way, you can think about topological field theory. Topological field theory in the sense of, kind of mac Maxime, I did some work on myself. This produces for you something based on a Clavio category. Yeah, so that's why it's not really going to be good enough for what we want to do. Um, I suppose you could always think about compactly supported sheaves, but I think it's still, it's still not going to be really strong enough for what we want. Well, the second point of view on this, so my collaborator and myself um, showed how to do some quantization and quantization in 
perturbation theory. No, but if you want to get this, the kind of thing we want to, that choice does not appear for what I mean by quantization. Because it, uh, you, mean it, you want some solution of the master equation. Right. The master equation, you don't need to extend to the boundary of Lee Mumford space. Um, okay, so maybe I'll say a little bit about our argument in a second, because our argument, kind of similar to the TFT argument Maxime introduced, involves the open close theory. So fix a sheaf, say E on X, can we quantize the couple theory? for like the open, the couple open close theory. And the answer is um, if and only if the total Chern class of E is 0, then the cohomology of X. So the what's is the, is the, this have to do with you know constant uh, ambiguities in trans theory? Yes, and it has to do with something in the A model, which you're very very familiar with, I'm sure. If you want to kind of count curves with boundary on some Lagrangian, just some Lagrangian. Then in this count, there's a bad, there's a co-dimension one boundary when the circle shrinks to a point. So there's this ar argument of Dominic Joyce that says if this is the boundary of some chain, then you can cancel this anomaly by thinking about some kind of closed strings. So it's exactly that kind of thing. So in that case, you get the one higher dimensional homology <coughs> gives you space, some space of choices of quantizations, and do you have the analysis thing here? Yes. Um, yes, but if you work in a, but if you take something which is a kind of canonical trivialization, so for example, the structure sheaf plus the structure sheaf with a shift, mm -hmm. then it's completely canonical. So for the structure chief on x plus O x of 1, there's a canonical quantization of the open closed theory. And why is this? Well, the argument C, C and I have, I I think I don't, it's kind of a pretty argument, but I don't have time to um, explain in any details. Um, given I'm running, I have 15 minutes left, is that right? Yeah. So I haven't said anything about ADS CFT. So, so there's some kind of cancellation between kind of cohomology groups controlling ambiguities of quantization. For the open theory and the closed theories. Okay, and the final thing you want to ask is when can we decouple the open theory?
from the TFT picture, this comes from a kind of co-dimension one boundaries, like Maxime kind of mentioned a minute ago. I have some surface like this, and I might have some cycle. There, I might have some cycle which shrinks. And as Maxime said, the, the issue here is in the, B, in the A model, this is not a problem, but in the B model, it involves a choice of trivialization of the Hodge filtration. And you kind of don't want to choose a trivialization of the Hodge filtration in general, because that's not something you can do locally on a manifold. It's kind of a global thing. So, so the answer is you can do this. This isn't money. In the following situation, so y is an even dimensional Clabia. E is a sheaf on y. I take y inside of so y cross 0 inside of y cross c. And then we consider the, the kind of the theory on y cross c with the sheaf i star v. Well, so if you think about these, these moduli, we're going to have some solution of the master equation coming from the moduli space, integrating over the top chain to the moduli spaces. And the boundary, the boundary of the moduli space that corresponds to various terms in the master equation. So if you want to have a solution of the master equation just for the open string piece, you want to arrange so that the boundary of the moduli space only knows about kind of open string degenerations, or so not this kind of one. OK, so I think 10 minutes left. So I think I'm not going to get to explain much about ADS-CFT, so I just have to briefly explain what kind of thing we find when we quantize, and then a little bit about ADS-CFT. What does quantization give us? Um, firstly, the closed string. If I take some kind of open subset of x, we have this sheaf of Lie algebras. I can take Chevalier algebra cochains of this guy. And we think of this as from the classical observables. So quantization produces some um, cochain complex. which looks like the same kind of thing with a h-bar dependent differential. So um, the h-bar dependent differential comes from you know, things about hierogenous surfaces. And well, it turns out here we had a commutative algebra. This h-bar dependent differential where the BV formalism is no longer a commutative product, but we have, we have product maps. If I have U and V, which are disjoint, <coughs> and W, we have a product map like this. It's a product map. <laughs> so 
So this means we have what we call a factorization algebra. Um, so how should you think of this? I, I'm sorry that like I have to, I'm writing like a book which is like 500 pages long with one of my collaborators on this kind of factorization algebras. So I'm sorry I said everything about it in like half of a blackboard. Um, but the, the, picture is, the picture is very similar to Graham's picture for what a quantum field theory does. We should think, of, for example, if u, v, and w are disks, that the product comes from a cobordism. So that these spaces we assign to u and v, they're like the Hilbert space of the theory on, on the boundary of the disk. This product map is the cobordism. So it's the kind of thing you know, people are kind of familiar with. OK, any, any questions about this? Probably lost everybody, but that's. <laughs> so I wanted to get, there's, there's a, there'll be a punchline in about a minute. So similarly, open string. kind of similar if I have some sheaf, sheaf on x, which is supported on some y inside of x, then I can send u, kind of this cochains h bar, The sheaf orham, coteins of the sheaf orham, um, with some quantized, some differential which depends on h bar. And the different, well, think about what is the differential? The leading term will be d bar. And if heuristically it has pieces which come from counting curves, like the A model analog will have pieces coming from counting curves. Has a term from the pairing, it's the BV operator, plus some kind of sum. Does this make sense? I mean, just for, for people who like topological field theory, um, I think I know Kenji's thought about something very similar. Um, all that's going on is if you think about these kind of, in the A model, if you think about counts of curves landing on a Lagrangian, there's some master equation. That master equation tells you some differential squared is zero. That's this differential. Okay, so in the five minutes, I want to ex explain how these things are supposed to be related. So I'll explain how they're related in a simple example. The example I'm going to consider about is on C3, but I make, which is made non-commutative. And I put on a, we have a polyvector field. which is dz1, which is dz2, so that the, the first, the Poisson bracket is that z1, z2 is 1. The first two coordinates fail to commute. And that we have a, inside of this guy, I have c for the first coordinate, side of c3. And my, my sheaf is the structure sheaf on c, kind of um, tensor cn plus Cn1. C, the first copy of C inside of C3. This is quasi uh, Yes. No, it's, um, it's, we should really think of it as something symplectic cross C. So it's Lagrangian in the symplectic guy. So we can quantize it exactly. Now, if you think about what, what do you find kind of the Orham 
uh, in this non-commutative world. Well, for the first copy of C2, you know, we know how to compute Orhams in something non-commutative. That's just, we're just going to get like the RAM complex of C. And then I join an odd parameter from the Orhams and the other guy. So that the fields look like C epsilon tensor GL n slash n. So if you think about this, this is like um, the B model for the classifying space of GL, GL n slash n. Another way to think about it is the, the topological limit of Young Mills, of 2D Young Mills. I'm sorry, I don't have more time to explain about this. Um, okay, so what are the open strings of open strings factorization algebra? Well, it's an E2 algebra. Because we're, de we're dealing with a topological theory. Topological. The closed strings if you think about what the structure you find, um, we have C a non-commutative C2 cross C. Well, the non-commutativity makes it topological here. Whereas the other guy, it's a holomorphic thing. So it's like an E4 vertex algebra. So let's give names for these guys. We have the kind of A open string, and we're going to take some kind of slash n as this n goes to infinity. So we need to take the n to infinity limit, um, which, which you can do in this situation. And we have the kind of closed strings, which is the cochains of like, the poly vector fields. And then the theorem that the open string guy is equal to the causal jewel of the closed string guy as an E2 algebra. This would have been more of a punchline if I had time to explain it. So, but this is the, the more general claim is that this is what the duality gives us. Each side we have something like holomorphic version of an EN algebra when they're causal dual. So I take the closed string guy restricted to the submanifold, and these things are causal dual. Um, so why, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, so why is this kind of the very, if you look at the classical level, this causal duality is simply the hochschild kosen rosenberg theorem. hochschild rosenberg theorem combined with Siegen's theorem about large n, the algebra cohomology. So there at classical level, it's a kind of a triviality. The semi-classical level, there's a Poisson bracket. This turns out to be a very hard theorem. This is Maxime's formality theorem because we need to look at the Lie algebra structure. Rather, it's the cyclic version of the formality theorem proved by Wilbacher. But at the quantum level, some kind of deformation of this. Um, and from the point of view of physics, you know, what we're seeing is you know, we're computing the algebra of operators in the OPE of the large n gauge theory in terms of something kind of dual to this in the closed string theory. OK, so, so sorry I ran a little bit over. And thank you for your patience. Questions? Oh, this is a very nice question. Because, you know, it was, it was different. Uh, yeah, differential, h-bar differential, our terms are kind of polydifferential operators. Yes. Oh, ah, it's all of those.
it's all local. Well, it's a, it's a little subtle. I mean, there, there's some kind of choices, but you can make it as local as you like. Yeah. So there's some kind of. And also in ACFT, you get some kind of boundary to infinity or where is the boundary to infinity? Yes, yes, yes. So I didn't have time to explain this. So the reason um, I, I chose GLN slash N for the reason that you know, that means that the fundamental task can be trivialized with a cycle trivializing it also has support on C. But if I chose GLN, then I would need to trivialize the class of C as a class on C3. And that trivialization is going to be something supported in all of C3, which is poles along this C. So that means, so that's where, you know, I, it's, this is, I don't fully understand this, but what happens is that I need to remove C, and then I have something which poles on this, on C, and so I get something more familiar from the ADA-CFT picture. Make any sense? I mean, I'm still a bit puzzled about this aspect, so. Ezra, yes. So th this is going to be very vague, but I'm trying to understand the meaning of what you said. And if we drop back down to quantum mechanics, E1, yes. then we've got, say, the Durand complex on one side and differential operators on the other. Yes. And somehow, Resol the idea of resolution that the Durand complex resolves the constant chief is flung by causal duality into Morita equivalence or something. Is this does that, does this make any sense? It's possible. I mean, I think it's somehow easier. I mean, so what we're, what we're I mean, we're not saying the Durand complex is causal dual. It's rather the cochains in the Durand complex. Oh. Some deformation of that. So this is so at the classical level. This is the E2 algebra of cochains of GLN slash N. And at the classical level here, it's an E2 enveloping algebra. Um, and they're causal dual. I mean, it's, a, it's some, some E2 enveloping algebra. Oh, oh I was simply presenting a, a kind of a toy model. It wasn't meant to be a special case of what you Yeah. Uh... But then, I mean, somehow, is this like a quantum field theory analog of? Sheep theory versus Morita invariance. That's what I was I um uh, I don't know. I can't quite parse it in real time. But I see I see what you're saying. It looks a little similar, but so, so, you know, classical causal duality is mediated by bimodule. So is what's happening here? Yes, yes, yes. That's an interesting question. So another way to say it's mediated by an augmentation is another way to say it. So you need to show why why is this augmented and why does that? And somehow, if you think about what the augmentation means, you remember we were saying that it's sometimes hard to decouple the open string guy. So the obstruction to augmenting this guy is precisely the obstruction to decoupling them. That's the kind of thing. Another way to say it is if you look at the couple theory, looks like this, the Hochschild cohomology of the closed string guy. Right? And that's what you expect from. Does that answer your question? Thanks, Anton.